pretty much since the time I started this YouTube channel, I've been having people ask me to make a video on overhauling the three speed, also known as the over and under. And so finally gonna do it. This is part of the 1855 project. Um, to the best of my knowledge, it was working all right, so I'm not expecting to find any surprises, but you just never know. So the first thing we need to do is get the oil drained out. And I think I will actually pull the bell housing first. Then it makes it a little easier to spin it around and uh, hang it over the edge for a bucket. Before we even get to over and under. It's a pretty common error. I've done it way back in my youth. Putting this fork on backwards. Um, the bolt fork. When it's all assembled should be facing this just comes off throughout bearing some of them will have grease uh, greasable throughout bearing some won't oliver did it for a while and then um found that there was a lot of guys that just kept pumping and pumping and they wanted to see grease come out i guess but uh they would over grease it and it get in the clutch and they were having more failures from over greasing than uh bearings going dry and that's why they stopped putting the clutch bearing uh, grease tube on there so a guy can add it back on if they really want or something but if you put this on backwards and the when it's all assembled and that bolt heads on this side that throws the geometry of this fork off and <laughs> ends up uh, now your linkage won't or doesn't want to reach and even if you can make it reach, it really works hard just because of the, you say the geometry is wrong, the angles of the arms. So always make sure that bolt head is pointing towards the back of the unit and not the front when you got it done. Run the arm to the side a little bit where you can get the clutch lever out past the unit and then you can uh, get to that bolt real easy. Okay, got the fork to slide sideways just to show you. It's a big thick washer that sits into the shaft and engages that stay so that's all there is to that and then you just uh, slide the lever on out of course this one's got grease and whatnot okay once that's out of the way there's just one two three four five six seven bolts you'll say what's that empty bolt hole down there and that's fine there isn't one in the main housing of the over and under, but there is in the bell housing and this cover. Uh, I, I don't know. They just had a jig for drilling these holes that was already set up and possibly for other applications like reverse torque or something like that. Needed all eight holes instead of just seven, but that is perfectly normal. No bolt in the, bolt in the bottom hole. So just zip the other seven out. This one's actually gonna be a nut over here. The rest are bolts. Hey, wrong part's coming. Normally, the bell housing comes off and the input shaft stays in, but there's no uh, harm, no foul here in this happening. Looks like it's got ATF in it. Looks like it's a little on the low side too, maybe. Maybe not. Minor wear where the clutch discs hit. Not enough to justify a new shaft in my opinion. Bearing turns smooth, no wiggle. Yeah, I can't say I've ever had one stick like that, but not the end of the world. Pipe plug's just a half inch pipe plug with a square head, normally. You might find all sorts of things from other people. Oh look, missing the bucket. Dang it. That's what I get for trying to do too many things at once. That fluid's kind of on the brown side for uh, ATF. Well, let's examine, you know, my uh, check puddle here. 
this is we put it on the floor so we can see if there's any unwanted stuff in there yeah that's it and it don't look too bad the thing hasn't you know turned in over 10 years so uh there could be crap in there but the uh magnetic drain plug has only just a couple little you know fine filings which is normal so now that my uh, test puddle has shown me that things aren't too bad in there i'm gonna put some uh, test puddle removal stuff on it next thing i'm gonna do is take the side cover off some of these things can be done uh, independently you could take the back cover off if for some reason you wanted to work on that um, I say if you got them down this far might as well pull it all apart but I have seen a couple instances where just you know everything else is in good shape or the rear seal went out and you pull the sprocket just a little e-clip that holds the lever on here get that off a screwdriver slide the lever off I'll spin the filter off. Imagine that, it's dry. We we'll wanna get this line off. This is a lubrication circuit line. It feeds oil into the cover, feeds some into the bottom shaft, and then works its way up and uh, lubricates, uh, also lubricates some of the stuff in the uh, overdrive area, including the overdrive, uh, I'm sorry, the sprag clutch and overdrive clutch pack and some of that, which will be more, more apparent as we tear her down. Loop line off. So, she's kind of dirty. I power washed the tractor, but it's hard to get some of them spots. These two uh, three quarter inch head, half inch bolts, leave them alone. They're what holds the pump in. Um, we'll get to them later. But uh, just uh, all the 9 16 heads around the perimeter. Some of them are nuts, some of them are bolts, because some of them are on studs. And there's a reason for that. The ones in bolts go into blind holes. And a blind hole is uh, one that doesn't go cut all the way through the casting. And so you don't have to worry about oil following the threads going through. Whereas the uh, ones with nuts, they're on studs because those holes, there isn't enough room for the casting to be deep enough. So it goes all the way through. So then you can put sealant on the, uh... oh, it fell off up here. You can put sealant on the stud and just leave it in there. Although sometimes the studs like to come out. Once you got all those bolts and nuts off, there's still two stud or uh, dowel pins, one up here, one down here, that keep it all true. And they hold pretty good, because you know that's what they're supposed to do. So I, usually it overlaps a little bit up here in this upper corner. Get you started. It's cast iron, so don't, don't get too carried away. It can break.
closer you can pry to the dowel pin, the easier it goes. There we go. Let's see what's in there. Here's the uh, pump that runs it all. It's all a self-contained system. Looking pretty good in there. What's this? Uh, well, that's just part of the paint on the casting. Slight film of uh, just uh, stuff. And hey, there was a bolt missing. I don't think I packed that full of dirt. Hope it wasn't broke off. Nope. Well, have to remember that. Right here are the two ports for this is overdrive and direct goes through this one. Little O rings there. We'll cover them more on reassembly. Not seeing any chip teeth or anything weird there. So our next mission is to get this off the back and it looks like someone tightened it with a chisel i'll probably end up buying a new nut the seal kits with the for these don't come with a nut because normally you can reuse it unless you beat it to death like that i guess the rubber mallet ain't got much oomph You'll usually find one of the four notches has a tab bent over. Sometimes too, when they're widened out like that. Well, when in Rome. I wonder if my spanner wrench, if there's enough left to even grab. Not wanting to turn, is it? This spanner nut I bought from Maple Spring Farms. I'll put a link down in the description. Maybe the impact will bust it loose better. Got to be careful those little tabs ain't very thick, so uh, you hit her too hard and you can bust her tool. Cool. Yeah, I think I'll be buying a new one of those. That one is just beat i suppose we'll see how much it costs it's still doing its job got the locking tab collar here and then from there the sprocket should just slide right off the shaft like so There's an O-ring in there, get a pick. This O-ring keeps the uh, oil from following the splines out there by the nut. But if you try to th pull things apart without taking this O-ring out, it'll fight you. Ah, oh, come on, it jumped back in there.
there. I usually put that O-ring with the rear sprocket. Just set it there like so. Because the seal kit doesn't really identify all those parts. And so sometimes it's nice to have uh, the one you took out to compare the sizes to. That's how you got to do a lot of them. All right. We need to take the overdrive clutch pack off now. Which we'll tip it down. I took a wire brush and whisked off some of the uh, dust and dirt. 7 16 head bolt here. Quarter inch bolt, 7 16 head. It goes through and actually uh, screws right into the counter shaft. Keeps it from turning, pulls it tight against the seals. Once again, stuff we'll see when we put it back together. But it's got to come out. Nine sixteenths bolt. That one just holds the cover down, as well as these. These are all three eighths bolts, but this one has a nine sixteenths head. And these other four have a 3 8 12 point head. They're what's called a ferry bolt. They're a little harder, but I think the biggest thing is it gives more room for the uh, chain coupler in there. You get into other models that have the trunnion mount. And by that I mean um, there's a round hollow part that slides uh, and later Oliver's it slides in to a another part uh, on the rear end. It seals the two together and there's couplers in there. A lot more durable than the chain coupler. But the chain coupler uh, didn't require quite as precision engineering on stuff and alignment. And then later whites, the over and under slid over the trunnion on the rear end. There was an O-ring in there and the early ones were dry, later ones were had gear lube in there. But I digress. On those, you'll just see a regular hex head bolt. Uh, there's a copper washer on each one that helps keep uh, any oil from following the bolt threads up and your seal kit should have new ones of those okay That proof screwdriver in. Let me grab another. It's a pretty close fit. There's an O-ring in there. So you just kind of got to work your way around and work it up to get it off in there. So you get two of them about 180 degrees out from each other, then it goes pretty good. I think the clutch pack's coming with it the way I did it. Also not the end of the world. pieces falling. Let go. Not today. It can all come out. It just has got to 
separate or as a unit and don't go back together that way. I just want to get it off the shaft. Maybe if I tip it back up. Ouch. Ow. All right, got that out of there. Sometimes it'll come that way. Um, sometimes this part will stay behind. Just depends kind of where you get prying and how snug this fits into there. As long as you're not forcing anything, it's not the end of the world. There's a plug right here. So I find the easiest way to get that out is just to tap the shaft from the front side a little bit. The shaft down here. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. Don't want to go too far. There's an O-ring on that shaft on the front side. There's an O-ring on this plug. But then if it drops, it's really hard to get it back going forward because you want it to go out that way or the O-ring is going to drag going through bearings. Pain in the butt. So that plug is out. So now I can go back the other direction. Don't want to mar anything up here. There's an O-ring that goes in there and all that good stuff. And then the lube oil goes in the center hole. Just there. Got it with finger pressure. Helps to hold the gear inside that it goes through up while you're... There's that shaft. There's the O-ring I was talking about that's on the front. Okay. You want to get that lower shaft pulled as close as you can over this way. And once it is, then there's room for this drum, the shaft, to slide out the front. The rest washer stayed with it planetary gear set stayed with it they float in there so they can go either way when you're taking it apart and now that the shafts out of the way stuff up top you know, lift this lower shaft try not to drop it the bearings might slide out Take that shaft out and then the thrust washers for that lower shaft and now your housing is empty and you just have some sub assemblies to take apart. So not too bad. Let's do those sub assemblies. This assembly I generally don't mess with other than cleaning it up as far as disassembling I check the planet gears to see if there's any looseness or roughness in the bearings not too often I find that there's a little bit of end play in them that's normal but they feel good uh, if for some reason you lost to overdrive only or is it no overdrive and under but you still have direct these four bolts that hold this planetary set to this gear that drives off the lower shaft they have been known to shear off and uh and then there's nothing to connect the power from this to this to drive it on through to the rest of the way so direct will work but over and under will not Good chance that's your problem them four bolts this 
bearing that goes in the back side. It's pricey. I've only ever replaced one or two, and that was probably just out of abundance of caution. They seem to be a pretty durable bearing. If there's something wrong with them, it's pretty obvious. They're discolored or something like that. There's wear inside the gear. So I usually read that bearing. This is a thrust washer that, man, I've already gotten stuff dirty. What kind of shop am I running here? This one appears to be in good shape. Just a little bit of wear. All right, let's see if we can't get this out of here. Guess I could put some air to it. stay in that cover I think that's what I'll do this hole right here is what feeds the clutch pack normally this would uh, the oil would go in here and push it and engage the clutch pack since this is not bolted onto the unit it should push this right out I want to be careful it could shoot out like that ta-da So we got our sun gear shaft. Boop. It just kind of hangs in there because of these cast iron ceiling rings in there. Here's our sprag clutch. If for some reason you're only missing. Yeah, that don't really surprise me. If you're only missing underdrive, this part here could be bad. Amazingly enough, these higher horsepower tractors with a three-speed, this Sprague clutch is much smaller than a hydropower drive. But it had to be in order for them to fit it all in here. Seems to be a common thing. There's a thrust washer right behind that Sprague clutch. It always seems to be broken. Those oil holes just don't, there's, don't leave a whole lot of metal there and Last I knew you could still get that. We'll find out. I got a parts over and under. So I might check that. I'll see how much a new one costs. Needle bearing that sits in there a little farther. And then just like I say, these uh, ceiling rings, which there'll be new ones of those in the seal kit. This is the support. Generally it's good. It has a ceiling ring in it too here. Oh, not too bad to get out. I'll take this one out. You find where the two halves are hooked together. There they are. Kind of get your O ring pick in there. Just kind of lift one up over the other and they'll come unhooked. Sometimes a little tab breaks off, but like I say, come some new ones. I find a snap pair of snap ring pliers works good for expanding that out just a little bit. and getting it out of the groove. That one's now bare, ready for cleanup. Um, I've seen them before. This is where the overdrive clutch pack uh, pushes against when it's engaged and a ditch the, and a disc can slip out. Things are too loose and then it spins against this and can cut into it. And I've had to replace one or two, but this one looks fine. That big bearing I was mentioned that was expensive, it rides. Yeah, it rides there. Yeah, that's, this is like where that one I was telling you it's expensive rides. Here's the O ring that seals the housing. These are the clutch discs for overdrive, thrust washer. Pay attention to 
which way that goes, the notches face towards the back of the unit, towards the transmission of the tractor, and the flat surface faces towards the engine. But these look pretty good. The teeth are good on them. No uh, flaking or removal of the uh, friction material. Doesn't look like anything's warped. I think we can reuse those. Here's five springs that these push against the plate back there that, uh, there's one more disc in there, returns the piston back when you take it out of overdrive. One more separator. The five springs. Don't want to lose them. The, o, or the outer ring that holds a clutch disc. And we'll cover that when we go back together, but there's a step in it. That step faces towards the back of the unit. That's out. Use my O-ring pick to grab this plate. This is the plate those springs push against. You can see them right there. They push down against the clutch piston. Which we can, we can now use some air to force out the rest of the way. And there it is. There's seals on the outside and seals on the inside. And those will come with a kit too. You'll have actually more than you need with a kit because there's slight variations in the different over and unders and rather than having kits and people getting the wrong kit and trying to keep track and more part numbers everything for all of them comes in one kit because the majority of it's the same but there will be a few things like seals and o-rings you'll have left over there's an o-ring here that's sealed against that lower shaft stuck in the So other than the bearing and the seal, I'm gonna pop that seal out. This ought to do the job. Yeah. I don't know if some dirt fell in there when I took it apart. It's feeling better, but at first it didn't feel so hot. I might just get a new bearing for it. it. Feels pretty good other than that. But that ain't too difficult either. There's a snap ring, you pry that out, drive the bearing out this way, drive your new bearing in. Yeah, I might look into a new bearing. Better safe than sorry. This is the output, so it takes a lot of the load. If it starts getting loose, then seals and stuff back here can start wearing early, prematurely. So, we'll leave that in there for now. The output shaft, which also contains the direct drive clutch pack. This just has a snap ring. It's got to look around for the end. I think that's it. Nope. There's the end. It's just a round springy wire on some, this better not be one of them early ones. Doesn't seem like it. Snap ring back there. On some of the earlier over and unders, there's only a snap ring on the back side here. And then the snap ring here. And so you actually have to load everything from the back and put the shaft in because it doesn't leave enough room to get this one out. I 
I don't think that's the style this is. It's always a part number in the drum here. Where did it go? Thought there was. There it is, 3308-8227. I'm pretty sure that's the last version of this. But as we'll see in a moment, they put a snap ring down in there because these drums on the original design could kind of wobble a little bit when it wasn't in direct. But when everything squeezed together on in direct, that pretty much stiffened it up. But when you're using over or under, this could kind of wiggle and cause vibration. So uh, they came out with this replacement one and it comes with a, now if you get a shaft, it just automatically comes with a drum. You can't get just the shaft. And that's the main reason to, first it was just to make sure they all get updated and probably most of them have been. Every now and then I come across one that's got the old wobbly one in there but this ain't wobbling but it ain't giving quite enough room to get that snap ring out of there either. not sure what's going on there usually it's a little easier than that they usually come with two sizes of o-ring in the kit or o-ring come with two sizes of this snap ring in the kit someone might have worked hard to push this in there i'm looking at you chris not me, Chris. Chris that used to work for us. I mean, I can't blame you. The thicker one's going to hold up better. But just depending on how much room is in there, they got a thinner wire one to get down in there. It's like just a little more than my uh, O-ring pick is liking. I'm going to get something a little heavier. Let's try this heavier pick. That's getting it a little better. Right tool for the right job. She wasn't going to come flying apart. Usually they go a little easier than this, but it'll come. I just broke my pick tool. It should be a little heavier duty now. Yeah, look at that. I mean, I just improved my pick tool. Did I break some more off? I think I did. Yeah, I think I'll be using the thinner wire when it goes back together. This also doesn't give it a lot of room for the clutch discs to separate, which could cause them to drag and create heat and wear. Yeah, now it's a specialized tool. Almost there. I got it. See that? That's not hard at all. <laughs> oh my. Now the uh, clutch pack can just slide right out. Let's see what we got. That looks good and good. It's all looking good. Teeth are good. No weird wear patterns, scratches. Friction materials all in place. I think we can save those too. Ooh, the wind's picking up. There's one more sticking in there, at least one more.
and then there's this thicker one that goes against the piston that's in the bottom then we have to go to the press to get the next part apart well the GoPro decided to act up I thought I was you know recording and it wasn't so I got these bars on here I need to make a u-shaped piece it would definitely be safer but uh, just basically uh, use them to push this cover that holds the spring on down then uh, take your snap ring pliers get the snap ring out of the groove if it's down here get the snap ring moved up to where I got it now then you can slowly let your press back up and the pressure will hopefully come off and then you're good but yeah you're making a u-shaped piece or taking a pipe I got some pipe that might work and cutting a notch into it so you can get in there to get the snap ring out would probably be the safest bet I'll have to make one for when we go back together now this one slid off pretty easy I just turned it up and the shaft come out. Sometimes the bearing fits in there pretty tight. You gotta tap the shaft to get it out of the housing. Other times it slides like this. Oh, it looks like this has the later set of, there's a heavier duty ball bearing that they can load more balls into. And I think that's this style by the looks. It feels really good, but that extra ball really takes uh, a lot more beating and thrust on something like an 1855 it really probably ain't gonna matter it's when you start getting in the higher horsepower whites that you want that best ball bearing up here but there's a seal in here I don't look too bad that's the main reason to get the uh, input shaft out the input shaft there's a bearing in the middle here and then there's a seal in front of that so um, I use the slide hammer to pull that out as well. But that's all there is to tearing it apart. Oh, maybe the side cover. Maybe that'll be its own episode, going through that. That's probably the right thing to do. Try to keep them from being too long. It makes it easier to look stuff up too. If it's not all in one, uh, one video, you can go to the one you need. So there's our guts of an over and under unit. Other than that one broken thrust washer, everything seems to be in good shape. I'm not expecting to find any surprises in that cover. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.